That's a very pleasant 70 degrees. And the wind right now is calm. Oh, maybe a five or six mile an hour breeze is blowing in at the moment. Left-hander Jerry Royce warming up down the right field line in the pirate bullpen. Then right-hander Mike Truco down the left field line in the cup bullpen. Davey Johnson is starting lineup today. First day for the veteran who the cup got from the Philadelphia Phillies yesterday. I'm Vince Floyd, along with Lou Boudreau. Welcome to our broadcast. Give you the batting orders in a moment. Our game today is brought to us by the Association of Chicagoland McDonald's Restaurants. The Chicagoland Oldsmobile dealers. They find out how the gallant men of old can make car buying a real pleasure for you. General Finance is 70, Chicagoland office. And to borrow up to $10,000, just pick up the phone and call old friendly Bob Adams at Andover 32020. True Value Hardware Store. Not just a name, it's their way of doing business. True Value. And the G. Heilman Brewing Company of La Crosse, Wisconsin, makers of Old Style. The pure brewed beer from God's country. Old Style. For the visiting Pirates, of manager Chuck Tanner who come in after dropping both ends of a doubleheader yesterday to the Philadelphia Phillies, Doc Connors. The Cubs, his results getting the split with Montreal are now four and a half games in the rear. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are nine games behind. And Pittsburgh only a half game in front of Montreal now. But Frankie Tavares is going to be leading off Tavares at shortstop. Manny Sanguian will be hitting second and Sanguian doing the catching. Willie Stoggill over at first base. Stoggill hitting third and Dave Parker in right field. Parker batting cleanup today. Bill Robinson in center field. They've used him in the infield. They've used him in left field. Very rarely does he go into center, but that's where he is today. Johnny Milner will be in left field. Milner hitting sixth with Rennie Stennett, still plagued by a bad knee at second base. Stennett hitting seventh. With Bill Garner at third base. Garner batting eighth. Jerry Royce, 0-1 for the year. He is making his second start of the season. He has been used primarily in relief this year. For the Cubs, Yvonne DeJesus leading off. Yvonne at shortstop with a six-game hitting streak. Rodney Scott will be in center field. Scott batting second. With Bill Buckner at first base. Buck hitting third. Mike Vale in the cleanup position today. Vale in right field. Bobby Mercer still hobbled a little bit with a bad ankle that he re-injured yesterday. But Mercer says he thinks he'll be okay for tomorrow. Mike uh, hitting in the cleanup spot will be followed by Dave Kingman. Kingman in left field. Manny Trail at second base. Manny batting at six. Davey Johnson at third base. First appearance in a Cub uniform. Johnson batting seventh and Jim Blackwell doing the catching with Mike Kruko going after his sixth win. He is unbeaten this year. Comes out on the field right now to lead the Cubs out of the dugout. Let's take a moment for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. The time is 1.30. Played up by Max Davidson. Joe West working at first base. Johnny Kibler is second, Nick Colosi is third, and Vance Fothergill in our national anthem.
crowd. Here's the beautiful old Wrigley Field. We'll be back to the first pitch of the ball game right after this message. <laughs> Tavares, the leadoff man, good speed, 26 stolen bases, but he's also been caught stealing 20 times. His percentage is not all that great, is it? Right-handed hitter, batting 276. He has four homers this year with 28 runs batted in. Joe Lonette coaching at third, and Al Monchek in the coach's box over at first base. Bruco worked earlier this year just a third of an inning in relief against this ball club. That's before he was sent down to Wichita to get his act straightened out, which he certainly has done. And he, in a third of an inning, walked uh, or gave up three hits and walked a guy, and all four runs eventually scored. Coming in after Mike was taken out of the ball game, Paul Russell came on in relief and yielded a grand slam home run to Bill Robinson. And four runs charged against Spike in that one. Right-hander delivers. First pitch swung on and fouled. Back out of play, and the ball game is underway. Dave Kingman, Rodney Scott, and Mike Bale in the cub field. Spike in the windup, the big right-hander's next one. Third ball that Tavares is to lean down as it goes right over his back. Oh, one strike one on him. Davey Johnson over to third. In just a little bit. Another breaking pitch. It's in for a strike on the inside corner to the right-hander. Ball one, strike two. Boy, they really watered down that infield today. Frankie Tavares stepped out for just a moment. Now he's back in. He really crowds the plate. Here's the pitch. Jammed him with it, and he fouls it out of play behind the dugout on the first base side. That may wind up a souvenir with the Red Cloud group over there, Lou. If it does, uh, it'll yeah. tear him off with a lot of hits. They won't be making any catches. Thank you, Evan. Dave Peck down there uh, got a cap on, even though we don't have too much sunshine. Sunshine to be he showed that there noggin to be a lot of reflection in the batter's eyes. Check swing and the ball off the bat goes over near their dugout. Chuck Tanner, one foot up on the edge of the dugout on this near side. His old boss man, Johnny Allen. Going the White Sox out here today, too. There's a swing, a little pop, pop, a pop, a pop, up near, up near the bag of the Jesus and Frio, and it's Manny Frio. That's the son of Yvonne. Excuse me, pal, I'll take it. Yeah. If you, if you stay over on that side. Anything over here is fine. You stay over there. <laughs> One away and a check swing. Manny Sangian. Right-handed hitting veteran, hitting 291, three homers, and nine runs batted in. Mike's earned run average now at 3.36 for the year. Side-arm fastball to this hitter, and he takes the strike. Inside breaking at the just to Tavares. Good fastball to Sanguian, who flags himself very deep in the batter's box. Now he has to take off that white lemon-colored uh, uh, helmet with the black bill on it. That's the ball club, of course, that sports different uniforms for just about every hour of the day. Here's a swing and a bouncing ball back at second base. Real has it. Here's a quick throw, and he's got him in plenty of time. Ball bouncer back at second base. And Sanguian is retired. That brings up Willie Stargill, who not only has, has 417 career homers, he has taken over the all-time leadership in strikeouts in his major league career. They play respectfully deep for Mr. Stagel. Takes the first pitch to ball. He's hitting 280 with 16 homers and 50 runs batted in. Bruco's next one. Swung on a miss. Off the breaking ball down and away. Heading cool. Buckner on the edge of the outfield grass about 10 feet off the line. Frio just in front of the grass at second, and he skated well over. Here's the pitch. Pass ball, tried to hold up, and he couldn't do it. Ball one strike two. And Bale very deep in right. Rodney Scott, you can see way out in the distance in deep right center field. One two pitch, pass ball. Takes it inside above the knees. Ball two, strike two, and the great veteran Stargill. Can use to twirl that bat now. The pitch to him. Swung out and this one right on through a quick fastball. Boy, 
Grizzle really challenged Willie. Three up, three down. Cuts come to bat against left-hander Jerry Royce. And after a half inning, no score. Yvonne de Jesus to lead off. Hitting 281 now. A six-game hitting streak. He's hit 306 over that span of six games. And he's also hit safely in 14 out of his last 15. Jerry Royce. Who almost became a cup this year. In some ways, it's been a short season for him. He's had so little work. He's only worked 42 in a third inning. Given up 61 hits and an earned run average 7.02 for Royce. Given up 33 runs earned in 42 in a third inning. Last start was against San Diego, July the 16th. Had no decision. Give up seven hits and five runs in three and two thirds innings. Last win was also against San Diego. That was last year. And he threw a shutout against him. Made a start against the Cubs in the 14th of this month. Had no decision. Six hits, two earned runs in five innings. This is playing at a ground ball down to the third baseman, Connor. Bill picks it up and the peg over to start going to Jesus, who's out going after a breaking pitch on the first offering by Jerry Rice. One away. That brings up Rodney Scott, who will bat right-handed. Rodney hitting 300. Two runs batted in. As a right-hander, he's 8 for 28. Connor Tavares on the left side of the infield. Rennie Stennis and Willie Scott going on the right side. Van Gien doing the catching. Parker, Robinson, and Milner in the outfield in right, center, and left. Our broadcast is authorized under rights granted by the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has the right of approval of the announcers for this event. It is solely for the entertainment of our audience. It is the wind-up by Rice. Pass ball by the big guys in for a strike. Rodney wearing number 32, straightaway stance. Rice delivers. Curveball, it's too high. Didn't break, 1-1. One one. These two clubs... Opened up the season at Pittsburgh with John Candelaria throwing a one-hit or a three-hit shutout. And the Pirates won it one to nothing. 1-1 one, one delivery. Back ball goes to the right side. Base hit. Sargo was way off the line, but it was still to his right side. Had him fooled. Hit a snake down there. Now, keep an eye on Mr. Scott. I am sure that he will... Try to catch Van Gee throwing arm, which is not a renowned one to begin with. See what kind of a jump he can get. He's 13 and 3 in stolen bases, Rodney is. And Bill Buckner, left-handed hitter, stepping in. Hitting 316 with Almer and 34 runs batted in. Scott has a big lead against Roy. And Jerry steps off the pitching rubber. Cookie Rojas coaching at first. Joe Malpitano coaching at third. Now the stretch and a step in a throw over the first base. Didn't have anybody fooled with that one. Looks like a decoy move. Big, tall, blonde lefty. Gets his sign, kicks, delivers. And his move that time sent Scott back to first base as he missed high and inside to the fastball to Buckner. In the on-deck circle, Mike Vail. Scott scampers off to a lead. Not quite as big as it was before. Doesn't go. Buckner gets under the fastball and Bill fouls it back out of play on the third base side. We have about 40 members of the Red Cloud organization sitting over on the first base side between the dugout and home plate, led by the president, Mr. Pete Longy. Very charitable organization. One out, runner on. No score, 1-1 one, one delivery. Scott doesn't go, the curve misses high and inside. All two, strike one. I would say they're going on this one. 
Royce has to be close to the plate. Bucker does not swing in this too often. Out of ball, two strike one. He's again extended his lead. The big one. Royce into the stretch. Look, there he goes. Here's the pitch swung on. Ground ball. Not down by the first stop. Makes the throw to first base. He is still out at first and Buckner. Look out, Bill. Don't get thrown out. Joe West calls him out. The Mariners had broken for second on the hit and run. Scramble back, put on the brakes. Took the ball out of that infield. Half Bud through the first and Buckner is called out. And Herman Cranks is coming out to help protect his player. Very, very close. We're taking a look at our replay on the television monitor that we have in the booth. And I have to say that Mr. Joe West missed that one. It was close, but Buckner had one foot on the bag and the other one was coming over it before the ball got into Stargill's club down there. Getting back to the fielding of Tavares, prior to the ball game, the ground crew wet the infield considerably to keep the dust down. And he really slipped on the yeah. west part of that infield near second base. And he was very lucky to get the call from west. They look like they uh, forgot, to, forgot to turn the hose off today. Looks much wetter than usual. Well, Herman, after giving uh, Joe West the umpire at first base, a little lecture. Finally goes back in the dugout. The call, of course, holds up. They have a runner at second base with two gone, and Mike Vail will be the batter. Zach Davidson, make sure that he sucks this little cap back into his right hip pocket there. Part of it was showing. Vail batting 347 with a couple of homers and 17 runs batted in. They said could get the Cubs out in front. Royce looks at Scott, delivers. Curve, and it's very high. Didn't break it all. He's thrown three or four like that, and none of them worth a nickel. Says he's got to get more work. Last year, he had an ERA of just over four. He won 10 and lost 13. Six over 200 innings a year ago. Where he's going, he won't get to 100 innings this year. Ball one. Then with Houston, Cardinals, now with the fight. Six out of delivers. Dale takes the fastball, and it misses down low. 2-0 on Mike. Dave Kingman is the on-deck circle. Pirates, of course, dropped a pair to the Phillies yesterday. Got shut out by Carlton in the second game. 2-0 delivery. Mike swings and a bouncing ball back at second base. Tavares has this one, and Bail is out by a step and a half to retire the side. Tavares scooting behind second for that one. No question about that call. No runs, one hit. Just leave, one man on. And at the end of one bulleting a play, Bruco goes out to the hill to face Dave Parker, Bill Robinson, and Johnny Milner. No score. Dave Parker hitting 288 with 16 homers and 59 runs batted in. Was injured for a while this year. Came back. And he has been back very, very strong. And he says, I'm still going to win that batting championship. One of the finest athletes in professional sports, whatever the sport is. Cincinnati had a knee injury. He a high school football player. And a lot of ball clubs backed away from drafting him. Big lefty. First pitch going. Swing on. And it drives down the left field line. That's going to be in there for a base hit. Gets by Kingman going down to the corner. Here's Parker on his way into second base with a stand-up double. Drilled that fastball hard on the line to the opposite side. He is so strong. That gives him his 16th double of the year. So their first hit goes for extra bases. And brings up Bill Robinson. Mike allowed only two uh, runs to the Cardinals in his last outing here last Wednesday. Game before that, he pitched against the Giants out there, gave up one earned run. 
Parker, who had that cheekbone fractured in a collision, wears the uh, kind of a mask in the face that you'll see football players wearing. Two bars connected to that batting helmet go right across the nose to protect that cheekbone. And he was quite an outstanding football player at Cincinnati in high school. Here's Robinson. He'll take and the first pitch is a strike called on an off-speed delivery. Well, Robinson is hitting only 244. He is a tough guy when you've got men in scoring position. Goes after that pitch to jams him and he fouls it back out of play. Strike two count on the right-hander. Has seven homers and 47 runs batted in. His stance straight away. And he pretty much crowds the plate. Against the Giants in six innings. Mike only gave up one earned run. He had no decision. The Cubs came on to win that ball game, five to three. Here's the pitch. Swung on, ground ball to the shortstop. Parker retreats to second. De Jesus take over to Buckner, one away. Led up on it a little bit, and Robbie could not help but pull the ball. One out, and Johnny Milner spent so many years with the New York Mets. Stepped in. He's playing in the left field today. Left-hander for the 300 batting average. He, of course, does not start regularly. This is his 73rd ball game. And he's been a bat officially 190 times with three homers, 20 runs batted in. Milner takes in the first pitch of the ball a little bit low. Rodney Scott, looking into the dugout, wants to know where they want him to play. And they move him over into left center field. Parker at second, the guy with a good lead. Kruko's pitch. Swung on and a high fly ball. Rodney just has to go back a few steps. Now, one or two to his right. He waits. He reaches up, makes the catch. Wheels the throw in towards third. Parker goes. He is in there, but there are two away. So they had him playing almost perfectly for Milner. And that will bring up Rennie Stennett, who is still bothered this year by a painful knee. The result of an injury last year. Right-hander extended hitting 253. Rennie with three homers and 33 runs batted in. In Truco's last three starts, he's given up two runs, two runs, two runs. Had one win and two no decisions. And in one of those games, that one against the Giants, one of the two runs not earned. Right-hander delivers the ball a little bit low. Ball one, fastball. 26 years of age, 6'4", 195. Sending him down to Wichita this year really turned things around for him. Came back and he fixed the purpley. 1-0 delivery. Swung on, bounces a foul ball. Up against Tim Blackwell, rolls over to the wall on the line to the plate in first base. And the count is level at 1-1. One one. Two out. He backs him away, but that went high and tight. Two and one. The nine games that these two teams have played against one another this year, there have been two of them go into overtime. Two-one delivery. Laps the ground ball to Manning. Trios left. He's up with it. Whips the sidearm throw over the Buckner, and the side is retired. And Parker, who led off the inning with a double, is left stranded. Good pitches. At the end of one and a half, the Cubs come to bat. It'll be Dave Kingman leading off against Jerry Royce. No score. Dave Kingman lead off, hitting 232 with 17 homers and 49 runs batted in. Talking about the keen competition this year between these two clubs. Pittsburgh has beaten five out of the first nine this year. It's only the second series between them at Wrigley Field. We've played them two series over there. The Cubs put them two out of three in their first visit into Chicago. Five of the games have been decided by just one run. One of them, of course, the extra inning ball game. The other extra inning game, the Cubs won by a pair of runs. First pitch. Kingman swings at a breaking ball, bounces it foul, back out of play. They do not have the shift on point. But Stennett is just at the edge of the outfield grass and about 10 feet on the first base side at second. And Tavares very deep in the hole, but shortstop, Garner deep. And of course, Milner. And the center fielder Robinson deep and shading him to full. And Parker's on the line almost with 
second and third. He goes after that off-speed pitch and pops it up. Tennant coming in on the dirt on the right side. Randy makes the catch, shoulder high. That didn't fool with that one, didn't he, Lou? Yeah, he had him way out in front. That's yeah. the pitch if you're going to swing, and especially Kingman, is to drill the ball into the ground past Stargell, second base. That's the one pitch that he should go to the opposite field with instead of taking that long swing. Looks like he just wasn't ready for that one. Full by. The Manny Trio hitting 260 steps in, driven in 36 runs this year, has a pair of homers. Let's see how Royce works on him. He has not had good control of the curve yet. Bruce puts a little extra on that one, and he misses inside, just above the knees. Got a strong arm. Royce about 6'5", 220. It's a fastball. Sails a little high. Ball two. Pittsburgh here again tomorrow. Rick Russell will schedule the pitch for the Cubs tomorrow afternoon. And we close out this week on the homestand Wednesday with a single game. Fastball. Strike call by Zach Davidson. Ball two, strike one. Each team with one hit, no score. One out, bottom of the second inning. Spears down, gets his sign from veteran Manny Sangian. Now steps back. Here's the windup. The big fellow next one. Trio had a notion to butt. And they apparently fouled it right at the feet of Sangian. Third baseman Garner was very, very deep. Had he been able to get it down there, should have been able to leg it out. Cubs lost two out of three. The first series at uh, Pittsburgh, losing the opener one to nothing. And then in 10 innings, getting beat four to three. That was a ball game in which uh, Bruce Tudor walked Jim Fregosi, who was in with the ball club, with the bases loaded in the tent. Fregosi, of course, now managing California Angels. 2-2 pitch. Swung on, a drive in the center field. Coming on is Robinson. Can't get to it. Base hit for Trio. Lines one into center field. Hit number two for the Cubs. Brings up for the first time in a Cubs uniform, veteran Davey Johnson. He has to be traded. And his first choice was the Chicago Cubs. He initiated the move, calling general manager Bob Kennedy. Bob said, well, i got to be careful. He said, I don't want to be accused of tampering. I will call Paul Owens, your general manager, and talk to him. When he did, Davey was in Owens' office. Cubs sent a minor league pitcher, right-hander, Larry Anderson, to the Phillies, and they optioned uh, Anderson to their Oklahoma City Farm Club. First pitch to him is a strike. He says he's just going to try to meet the ball. Outstanding years with Baltimore in the American League as a second baseman. He hit it. Straightaway stance. He takes. Off speed pitches outside. One on one. Spent uh, a couple of years playing in Japan. He came back. But he was tired of that baseball. And the studies took him on right away. But he saw a little action this year. 1-1 did every. Davy swings and a bouncing foul down the third base side. Let's take a moment here for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Earlier this year, as a pinch hitter, Davy set a major league record with two pinch hit grand slam homers. Then Mike Ivey did the same thing. A little later on this year. Ivy, of course, now with the Giants. Two pinch hit grand slammers. One year. One two pitch. A little late on the fastball. Fouls it out of play. Royce coming up and in on it. All two with the Phillies this year. Davy was 17 for 89. Got it in a total of 14 runs. 11 of them as a pinch hitter. 17 for 89 gives him a 191 batting average. One out, one on, one two pitch by Royce. Swung on a base hit back to second base. Leo rounding second. He's going to third. Robinson succeeds. Wheels it into second base. Davey Johnson and his debut with the Chicago Cubs singles right behind second base. He had the feeling low listening to his interview with you on the leadoff band that that's exactly what he was going to try to do. He followed that curveball beautifully. It was breaking down and in. And he just sort of poked that ball into center field. This is a veteran who knows how to hit and can handle that bat quite well. 
was on a, a couple of all-star teams. One year, he didn't get to play because of an injury. Sporting News named him one year as the best second baseman in the American League. He led the league in uh, putouts one year. He can play second, short, and third. Stepping in, Tim Blackwell. Batting right-handed against Royce in the first pitch of the ball, New Hideaway. Tim, only been a bat 14 times since the Cubs brought him up with two hits. No runs batted in. Runners at first and third, one away. Here's a pitch. Fastball. Royce caught the outside corner. That levels the count at 1-1. That's Lloyd and Mubu Drow here with him. And an overcast, but very, very pleasant day. Royce into the stretch. Chuck Johnson delivers. Breaking ball. Swung on and fouled. Back up high in the net. And it is grabbed by a young fellow. Up there in the first row of boxes in the upper deck. Ball one, strike two. For he's first, he looks right down the line from plate to third. Right spears down, gets his sign from San Gian. Blackwell leveling the bat. Rio takes the lead at third. Johnson at first, the pitch. Damned him with that one, and he fouled it back. Ball one, strike two. Cuts finally beat the Pirates in the third game of the opening series this year. On a homer off the bat of Bill Buckner. Still, he's only one this year. And Bittner hit a home run here at Wrigley Field to beat him. One, two, pitch. Fastball. Goes to the right side. In the above a circle. Goes to second base. Royce off the mound. Takes the return. Through. Double play. And Rojas is really beeping to Joe West. As Royce had appeared at his foot off the bag when he took the throw. And then came back with it. And here comes Herman Planks out again. Now that's the second call by Joe West that has gone against the Cubs in this ball game. Sarko to his right, gloved it. Through to Tavares. Tavares is throw as Davey Johnson went in standing. Over to Royce, the pitcher. Just as Blackwell was coming down on the bag. And it is going to be a very, very tough ball against the Cubs, and Herman is still out there beeping to Joe West about it. But it'll go down as a double play, their 80th of the year, and the Cubs do not score in the second inning with two hits. One man left on. Ten to two, it is still 0-0. Zero, zero. General Finance, friendly Bob Adams. Bob, it's Bruce Russell, and I'm ready to go with an auto loan. Good, we'll be happy to arrange it. You know, Bob, a lot of guys buy on impulse, but I shop around, you know. Well, you should. A car is an important decision. Took my time, gave it a lot of thought, and I know exactly what I want. What are you getting? I'm getting the two-tone headrest, ashtrays, front and back, and fully upholstered trunk. I meant what kind of car are you buying? Bob, next time you see me, I'll be driving a sporty DeSoto runabout. Bruce, I don't think they make that car anymore. My second choice is the ever-popular Packard Coupe. Bruce, I hate to say this, but... Uh, Automobile? No. Broadway Limited? That's a train. Well, let me look through this World Fair catalog again. Pierce Arrow, Nash Road. When you need financial assistance, General Finance has a plan to fit your needs. It makes sense to call General Finance for their person-to-person -person Bob Adams service. General Finance has a professional experience and a particular plan for your particular needs. There are 70 General Finance Chicago area offices. Call friendly Bob Adams to borrow up to ten thousand dollars. Call and over three two zero two zero. Also, an office in Fox Lake. Arthur Frank, the Bears has been thrown out of this ball game. He continued the argument with Joe West, the rookie umpire at first base, Johnny Kibler, the true chief, intervening, and Herman is not giving up yet. That's two that have gone against him here today, and both have been costly. This has not appeared. He's gone. West threw him out immediately. West, just 25 years of age, umpired in the Puerto Rican League during the winter. Herman is still out there. But Johnny Kibler, the crew chief, in his 16th year, tried to persuade Herman that he could leave the premises and not cause any further delay in the ballgame. Two of them here today that have gone against the Cubs. And 
and a couple of them yesterday. Well, you very seldom see Cookie Rojas argue as vehemently as he did on that particular play only twice this year now that we've seen Cookie really put up an argument. And the thing that brought it on was that Royce was not on the bag. That's he right. made a stab at the bag. And he came back with a foot. And as he made that to get stab on the bag. Too late for the second right. one. Well, let me try to explain this. Then you can come in, you're a little nervous. <laughs> I'm getting a little steamed about it. You've got two matches there. Why do you got this cigar? You only need one. You're going to burn your fingers. <laughs> when he made the stab at the back, Blackwell had hit it. And this is yeah. what the argument is all about. And when Herman came out to argue, he argued, walked away from West, but he must have said something in his, yeah. in his exit because he was gone. Well, they finally end all the arguing and we'll go to the third inning out here. Oh, yeah. you, come on. <laughs> After so many close calls that have been going against the Cubs, you can't blame Herman for no. blowing his sack. Take a look at it again on our television monitor here in the booth on the replay. Rice stretching off for it. By the time he got the ball in the glove, now he goes back to yeah. catch the bag, you see? And he was off the bag when he caught the ball. And sure what Cookie Rojas was arguing about. And why West didn't see that, I'll never know. Gardner is leading off here, back to the ball game. The count now is three and one on Gardner. He'll be followed by Royce, the pitcher. Swing and a tap at the plate off the foot of Gardner. Usually that call, Lou, the umpire is looking at that runner and the first baseball, whoever takes the throw, in this case the pitcher, and hearing the throw coming into the glove. Well, I don't know whether they look at the runner's foot and then sort of hear the ball hit the glove or not. Here's a pitch behind Gardner. He walks. Gardner, who is batting 259, he has six home runs, 40 RBIs. He's on first. First walk of the inning by Kruko. Now here is Jerry Royce, and Buckner comes in to have a chat with Kruko to be sure as to where Kruko is going to leave the mound to cover this front if it is butted by Roy. Buckter, of course, will break in from third and cover the line. No score. We're in the third inning. Johnson moves in at third. Here's the pitch by Kruko. Throws the first, and Gardner has to dive back safely. A lot of times when a third baseman plays this shallow, and a good feeling first baseman. The manager will start his runner and have a run and bunt situation. Here's the pitch. Royce is going to bunt. Bunt through a fastball. Strike one. Royce is batting zero, zero, zero. He's been at the plate ten times. No hit. Gardner with his lead. Here's the pitch. Curveball high. One and one to count. No score. Top of the third inning. Gardner has led off the inning with a walk. Roy is at the plate trying to sacrifice. The count is ball one, strike one. Kruko set. Throws the first. Gardner dies back safely. Now we're set once again as Johnson is in on the infield grass. The stretch, the throw to first, no tag as Gardner dies back. Uh, Royce now out of the batter's box. We can't let the day go without saying that it is Hall of Fame day in Cooperstown. And our congratulations to all those gentlemen entering in that Hall of Fame. Here's the punt down to Johnson. Oh, he slipped. The ball gets past him. Goes to the shortstop. Royce is safe as Gardner charged that ball and tried to change direction. Going to his left, his feet went out from under him. The ball went past him to the shortstop for a base hit. And as I was continuing, our hearty congratulations to Eddie Menzel, who's going to enter the Hall of Fame for his notorious, meritorious work, sports writing for a number of years. So he is at Cooperstown, along with Eddie Matthews. We want to congratulate all those gentlemen. 
Now runners on first and second for Pittsburgh and the leadoff hitter, Tavares at bat. So credit Royce with his first hit of the season. Johnson at third. Buckner charging. Here's the pitch. It's spun it down the third base line. But it's spun it foul. Strike one. Tavares, normally a good runner, especially if he's beating one out for a base hit. Johnson on the dirt at third. See if the Cubs put on their defensive play to try to force Gardner at third, which means the Jesus will leave his position just on a count a little earlier than the pitch to the batter, Tavares. Kuko sets. Buckter coming in from first. Here's the pitch. He's going to swing. It's a ground ball base hit in the left field. Gardner rounds third. Here's Kingman throws the plate. It is off target. Gardner flies over the base with the first run of this ball game. Tavares swinging at the pitch. Hits a ground ball that had eyes between Johnson and the Jesus, the shortstop, for a base hit driving in his 29th RBI of the year. It leaves runners on first and second. Now the Pirates lead one to nothing. Royce is at second. Tavares at first. Now the Cubs will try to force a man. If the Seguin bunts the pop up, it lands in front of Buckner. He has one play. He gets Seguin at first, and West gets a hand for calling him out. Cubs. Right side of the infield deep. Here's the pitch. Fastball low, ball one. Parker do up next. Left side of the infield, a third baseman and shortstop playing halfway. Here's the ball one pitch to Sarjo. The curve ball low. Ball two, no strikes. And he's a pretty good cripple shooter. So Kuko has to be very careful. Royce. At third, Tavares at second. The ball, two, no strike pitch. Curveball swing, ground ball, second baseman. They concede the run to get Stargell for the second out. So Stargell is credited with his 51st RBI of the year. The Pirates now have jumped to a 2 to nothing lead. With Parker at bat and Tavares on third. in the inning. Cubs now will play their normal position, try to retire Parker. Severus was on third with two outs. The windup and pitch by Kruko, fastball inside, just missing, and it's ball one. Parker doubled down the left field line, first time at bat. The pitch on its way. Fastball low inside. Ball two, Robinson. Two up next. Blackwell gives out the side. Here's the 2-0 and pitch. Let up, swing, and a line drive. Base hit. Into right field. So the Pirates pick up that third run on Parker's second hit of the day. His 60th RBI. It's now three to nothing Pirates, top of the third inning. And here's Robinson at bat, seventh man to bat in the inning. Pirates now with three runs, four hits. Cubs no runs, three hits. And the Pirates with three hits in his inning. Opened up the inning with a walk and he has scored. Robinson pops the first pitch foul in the upper deck. Whoops! <laughs> Fumbled by a young fellow in the first row, but he retrieves the ball as it lands on the net. Does not roll down to the playing field. Kruko into the stretch. Checks Parker. The pitch. Robinson swings. It's a ground ball at the Jesus. Tosses it to Trio to force Parker for the third out in the inning. But in the inning, the Pirates come up 
with three runs, three hits, one man left on the bases. Cubs coming to bat third inning. Pirates three, Cubs nothing. After Value Hardware stores offer a neat, easy way to paint your home with very little cleanup afterwards. Right now, they're offering the Red Devil Painting Pad Kit for just $6.99. It features a special metered roll tray that enables you to coat the pad evenly with just the right amount of paint each time, so you can apply paint to walls and ceilings without messy spatters. A large 9 by 3 and a half inch paint pad helps you cover a wide area to finish the job more quickly. And a handy 2 by 2 and a half inch sash trimmer lets you give a smooth, even finish to woodwork and other small trim areas. So paint your home the neat and easy way. Get the Red Devil Painting Pad Kit with tray, paint pad, and sash trimmer for just $6.99 at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Kruko will lead off the third inning for the Cubs. Let's see if he can help his cause. Roy helped his cause in the top of this inning by getting a single on a ball that went past Johnson when he slipped and fell. Get the Red Devil painting pad kit with tray, paint pad, and sash trimmer for just $6.99 at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. the third inning for the Cubs. Let's see if he can help his cause. Roy helped his cause in the top of the inning by getting a single on a ball that went past Johnson when he slipped and fell. Kruko is batting 176. He has three hits and 15 times at bat. It hasn't been the defense of the Pirates that have kept them in this race. It's been their offense. The Pirates have only made 80 double plays this year, very low, compared to 102 errors. First pitch to Kruko, fastball, pop foul in the upper deck. leading off the third inning for the Cubs. The pitch on the way, curveball high. Didn't break it off. Slipped right out of Royce's hand. The pitch. High, ball two. The wind up and the pitch by Royce. Fastball, swing a fly ball deep in the right center, but it's high enough to allow the outfielder to get under it. Parker drops the ball. It's off of his glove. Kruko is going to stop at second base. Parker and Robinson scored a out of card at that ball. Took their time. Trying to time it perfectly. And when Parker moved over in front of Robinson, reached up to try to backhand the ball, one-handed, it went off of his glove beyond Robinson for a two-base air. Now let's see if the Cubs can take advantage of that. That's their 103rd air of the season. Now here's the Jesus at bat. Pirates lead three to nothing. We're in the third inning. Royce on the mound, gets a sign from Seguin, takes the stretch. Here's the first pitch to DeJesus, a let up for a strike call. Robinson moved quickly over in the left center. The bench moved Robinson over in the left center. Gardner in shallow at third. Here's the pitch, let up, high. 
if Royce continues to throw that lead up into Jesus, he can drive it past the third baseman, Gardner, who's almost in on the infield grass. For what reason, I do not know. Cubs trailing three to nothing. I doubt whether the Aces is going to bunt. Here's the pitch. Fastball, he does bunt to Gardner. Gardner played a smart play. He moves Druco to third. Cubs trailing by three runs. And the Jesus gets a sacrifice as he bunts to Gardner, who throws him out. Gardner knows something. Unless he has the bunt sign for the Cubs. I really don't understand the play, but that's why I'm up here not managing, I guess. Here's Scott at bat. Sargio playing in at first. Here's the first pitch of the fastball strike call. Pirates shortstop and second baseman conceding the run. On the corners, they will not concede. Curveball low. One and one to count. One out. Gruco on third. Pirates three. Cubs nothing. Royce is ready. He's taking his windup. Here's the pitch. High fastball. Ball two, strike one. Gardner, even with the bag. Well, he's in front of the bag for Scott. Stargell is playing in on the grass at first base. Two and one pitch. Top foul. Out of play. Cubs trying to pick up one run here to be two behind. Royce is ready. The ball two strike two pitch. Fastball, pop foul, out of play in the upper deck. Scott singled past Stargell in the first inning. Now Stargell's moving back to a normal position at first base. Kruko with the lead at third. Here's the two and two pitch. Swing and another pop foul as Royce tries to Get the fastball past Scott, and he's spoiling them. Scott, if he can hit the ball past the pitcher, the Cubs will have a run. The wind up and pitch. Curveball popped up, foul territory near the dugout. It is out of play into the fourth row of box seat. So Scott will get another chance. No other action in the National League. The other action will be at night. San Diego at Los Angeles. Philadelphia at St. Louis. Atlanta at Cincinnati. The pitch. Curveball high. Three and two on Scott. Cubs wanting to pick up that one run to get close to the Pirates. Here's the three and two pitch. Royce. The pop up into center field, it's into right center. Parker's there, he has a good arm. Here's the throw to the plate, Kruko holds up. And Parker with another good arm threw a one hopper to Seguin. So it's a good thing Kruko held up and it's going to be up to Buckner to drive in the run. Two out, Buckner, first time at bat. Grounded out to Tavares. Buck levels that bat over the plate. He came into this ball game hitting 316. Royce on the mound, looks at Truco. The wind up first pitch is a curveball that knocks Buckner down. It just didn't break. Ball one. Royce gets his side. Here's the pitch. Buck takes a strike. A good fastball over the outside corner. 
One and one to count. Then the American League, the White Sox, will be in Kansas City tonight. Milwaukee enjoying a day off. One and one pitch. Curve ball, and it's low. Ball two, strike one. Seattle will be up at Minnesota. California and Oakland. Baltimore at Toronto later on. Ball two, strike one to count. Here's the pitch by Royce. It's high, ball three. Bale do up next. And if Buck can get on, the Cubs will have the tying run of the plate. Three and one to count on Buckner. Two out. The three and one pitch. Fastball, a swing and a ground ball to shortstop. Tavares has it. Fires to Sarjo for the out. In the third inning, no runs, no hits, one air, one man left on base. At the end of three, Pirates three, Cubs nothing. Over the years, lots of people have been asked why they drink Old Style. Probably the most common answer is that Old Style is just naturally good. Fourth inning, the Pirates will send Milner, Stinnett, and Gardner to the plate. Pirates out in front, three to nothing. John Milner, formerly with the Mets, playing left field today for the Pirates, flied out to Scott in center field, and the ball was deep enough to allow Parker, who had doubled, to reach third. But he could not score as Stennett grounded out. So... We open up the fourth inning with Kruko facing Milner. Cubs play John straight away and deep. First pitch, the pass ball for a strike called over the outside corner. Pirates with three runs, four hits. Cubs no runs, three hits. Another fast ball, but that's high. One and one to count. Johnson at third today, so it's a short trio at second and Buckner at first. That's the inner defense for the Cubs. There's a let up and a swing and a fly ball to center field. Scott coming in, still coming in. Calls for it. He has it as he moves right past the Jesus, the shortstop who is also out there ready to make the catch. One out. And now here's Kennedy at bat. The outfield has... Kingman in left, Scott in center, and Vale in right. Here's Senate who grounded out. First time at bat. Cook goes first pitch on the way. Curveball swing and a ground ball. Johnson makes a backhanded catch. Oh, what a play. He gets his face. Buckner was ready to throw the ball. The trio, Buckner having a few words with West, but Stennett beat it out. But what a play by Johnson. He backhanded that ball in fair territory, ended over into the foul territory. His momentum cut, carried him about eight feet in the foul territory, threw a perfect strike to Buckner, but couldn't get anything on the ball. And Stennett beats it out for a base hit. Let's pause five seconds for station identification this is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Here's Gardner at bat. Set it on first. First pitch, curve ball low, ball one. It was the walk issued to Gardner that opened up the three-run inning for the Pirates. They lead three to nothing. Set it with the lead at first. Gardner, a good hit and run man. Here's the stretch. Here's the pitch. It's low. Ball two. Royce do up next. So Tanner may have something working right here. Throw to first base as Tennant extended his lead. So that moves him back towards first. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Swing and a fly ball down the right field line. It's curving foul. Out of play. Two close plays at first base. And on the second argument, Herman Frank 
was ejected from the ball game by West. Never have we seen Rojas and Herman Frank argue as vehemently as they did against those two calls. The pitch inside turns him around in the batter's box. Three and one the count now on Gardner. It looks as if Buckner had his play beat, but he was called out. Here's the three and one pitch. Time is called as Gardner steps out of the batter's box, gets another sign. He wants to know whether Senate is moving or not. The stretch by Kruko, the pitch. Swing and a fly ball in the center field. Scott is there. Stennis moves back towards first. Scott has it. Two outs in the top of the fourth inning, and now here's Royce. Got his first hit of the season when he bunted the ball sharply in between the foul line and the pitching mound. And when Johnson came charging in and tried to change direction, he slipped and fell, and the ball went to the shortstop, and Royce was credited with a base hit. Left-handed hitter. Crew go step. Here's the pitch. Swing and a line drive foul over the Cubs dugout. Two out. Tended at first. Pirates three. Cubs nothing. Crew go step. The pitch. Curve ball. It's low. One and one to count. Buckner has moved behind Tennant at first base. One and one pitch. Curve ball that breaks inside. Now it's ball two, strike one. Davey Johnson, newly acquired player from Philadelphia, playing third. There's a ball outside and high. So now Kruko has a count of three and one. Uh, on Royce. Let's hope Kruko can hold him in. Three runs may not beat the cup. Here's a base hit. Pass Johnson right over third base. Going down the line. Kingman gets that ball in quickly to hold Stennis at third. And Royce now has two for two today. A double down the left field line in between Johnson and the bag. And the ball was hit well. It moves Dennis to third with two outs, and here's Severus at bat. Needless to say, that's Roy's first double of the year. So now Kruko has to work on Tavares. Tavares popped out the trio, first time at bat, and then singled in the third inning to drive in a run is 29th of the season. Now time is called. Mike Roick jogs out to the mound to have a chat with Kruko to settle him down and to remind him how the Cubs want him to pitch to Tavera. Save those two runners on base. Three runs, I don't believe, will beat the Cubs today. Blackwell's out talking with Truco and the Roar. And Julio Hernandez starts warming up for the Cubs down the left field line. Right now, the problem is Tavera. Two outs. Cubs are in normal position. With Johnson on the edge of the grass at third, just in case Tavera spots. Here's the first pitch by Truco. It's a good over the inside corner on a good fastball. Mike Kruko with a 5 and no record. The 0 and 1 pitch. Fastball, pop foul, and he had a little extra mustard on that one. 0 and 2, now the count on Tavares. Runners on second and third. Two out, fourth inning. Kruko gets his side. Now he's into the windup, the kick, the pitch. Side arm curve ball, and Tavares reaches outside and pops it foul. Kruko had an idea. Side arming Tavares with a count of 0 2. And only Tavares just reaching out, popping that ball foul, enabled him to stay alive at the plate. Here's the pitch. 
curveball over his head. That was an overhand curveball. Then it's one and two. Bale, very shallow in right field. Kingman deep in left. The one ball, two strike tip. Curveball, tapped to the third baseman. Johnson has the ball, tossed it to Butcher, and he gets him in time. Tavares very fast, flips on the grass, back of first in foul territory. But let me tell you, Johnson has to put a little more on that ball. He sort of lobbed it over to Butcher, and it was very close. But he's out for the third out. No runs, two hits, two men left on the bases. Cubs come to bat in the fourth inning, trailing. It's Pittsburgh three, Cubs nothing. Fourth inning. Let's see if we can get on the board. It's Bale, Kingman, and Trio. And Bill Burke brought up a point here with runners on second and third with two outs and a ground ball to third baseman. A lot of folks will say, well, why don't that third baseman run up and touch the runner? That runner has to be within arm's reach to do that because they are told that if the third baseman moves up to touch them with a runner on third to back up and just go like the devil back to second base. If he is tagged after the man touches the plate, that run scores. So a third baseman normally will make the play at third such as Johnson did. But John, or at first, I mean, on the throw. So that's the reason that you will see third baseman not make that tag. Now, Stock did it the other day, but there wasn't a runner on third. Because that runner is told if he makes a move towards you, you stop dead in your tracks and just turn and run back to second base as fast as you can. But no run score. So here's Bale at bat. First pitch by Roy. Curve ball into the dirt. Ball one. Bale grounded out to the shortstop in the first inning. Fastball into the dirt. And it bounced up and hits the plate umpire, Davidson. Well, John Lattis is all pros. We'll take on the Bees, the sellers, celebrity coaches, and the Bees dictate for the newspaper at Rivals Park in Joliet. It's a benefit, MF benefit softball game. That will come about August the 10th, Thursday, and there will be quite a few cuts donating their time and energy for that charity affair. That's August the 10th, 7 o'clock at Rivals Park. Vance Fothergill will be there, not to play softball, but maybe to play the organ. Here's a swing and a line drive, base hit. On the ball, two no strike count. Bale lines a single to center field to open up the fourth inning. Now let's see if Kingman can keep it alive. That was the fourth hit off Royce. On a changeup, popped out to center at second base in the second inning. Sargell is going to hold the runner on at first. Royce on the mound. Pirates lead three to nothing. Here's the first pitch to Kingman, a let up. High. Pirates do not use the ship on Kingman until he'll get the 2-0 oh or 3-0 and oh count on him. Ball one, the count. They over the lead at first. Here's the pitch by Roy. Fastball swing and a ground ball foul. Gardner grabs it in foul territory and quickly tosses it to Roy. The count now, one and one. On Kingman. The fans talking it up. They would like to see a rally. Rally I would like to see is Kingman, 18th home run of the season. The pitch, the curve ball low into the dirt, taken nicely by Seguia. Two and one to count. Bale has singled to center field to open up the fourth inning for the cup. Fourth hit off Roy. The stretch. 
the pitch to Kingman. Half ball, cap foul. He had a tremendous swing. But he got on top of it, fouls it back to the screen. Ball two, strike two now on Dave. Roy Spence gets his sign, looks directly at Field with his lead at first base. Here's the ball two, strike two pitch. Let up. Line drive foul as Kingman was out in front of it. Down the left field line. Cubs will be here tomorrow against Pittsburgh and Wednesday against Pittsburgh. Philadelphia will be at St. Louis. St. Louis has turned things around. Perhaps they can take care of Philadelphia for the Cubs if the Cubs can take care of Pittsburgh. Royce is into the stretch. The pitch. Fastball inside. It's three and two on Kingman. 3-0 do up next. Full count on Kingman. Mayo gets his sign as he leads off first base. Here's the stretch by Royce. The pitch. Curveball swing a line drive center field. In comes Robinson. He has it. On a basket catch below his belt. As that ball was sinking rapidly. But Kingman lines out to the center fielder. One out and here's Manny Trio. Manny Trio, who goes to right field quite well, will have first base to shoot at because Sargell is holding Bale on at first. Trio singled his first time at bat in the second inning. Royce on the mound. This is his only eighth start. Let up high. Which is something unusual for Royce. He's only pitched coming into this game 42 and one third innings. The one ball pitch now to Manny. Fast ball. First strike call knee high. Sargell is now playing off first base and in front of Vale. He's in a normal position. Fast ball, low. But Sargell sometimes plays off first base and then will quickly dart back to first. It's a timing play that the Pirates have with their pitcher. Vale just behind Sargell. Here's the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swing and a ground ball. A diving by Senate, but the ball goes into right field. He cannot find the ball, and Vail goes to third. A base hit off of the diving glove of Senate at second base, and the ball rolled about 12 or 14 feet into the outfield, right field, where it's picked up by Parker, and Vail didn't hesitate. He goes to third. Now here's Johnson at bat. He got his first Cub hit in the second inning. Here's a chance for him to drive in. One, two, or three. Cub run. He represents the kind run at the plate. Royce into the stretch. The pitch. Curveball. Top foul. And he had a tremendous cut at that curveball. Strike one. Pirates infield playing for the double play. The one strike pitch by Royce, let up, outside. One and one to come. Bale is on third, Trio is on first, one out. So the Cubs have the Ducks on the pond, let's get them in. Here's the stretch, here's the one and one pitch. Swing and a foul off of the glove of Seguin. Royce might have crossed Seguin up, he's run quickly out to the mound to have a chat with him. The count now, one ball, two strikes. If he did cross to get it up, then it's an indication that the Pirates are going to throw curveballs and let up to Johnson because that pitch was a fastball. That's the one he can hit out of the ballpark. 
The stretch by Roy. The pitch by Roy. Fastball high. Two and two the count. Davey Johnson. Batting for the Cubs. Fourth inning. Runners on first and third. Royce gets his sign. Checks trio at first. As Johnson calls time at the plate and gets it. From the plate umpire, Davidson. Now we're set. The two and two pitch on its way to Davey. Fastball pop foul out of play. Bale is on third. Trio is on first. Blackwell two up next. Once again, the two and two pitch to Davey Johnson. Pass ball high outside. He tried to get a little extra on it. It's now three and two. Now the decision has to be made whether to start trio from first on this pitch or to try to let Johnson swing away. Of course, he'll be swinging if the ball's in the strike zone. Here's the switch. Here's the pitch. High outside, ball four. Johnson walks. First walk of the ball game by Royce. And a fling brings up Blackwell, the catcher. Blackwell hit into a fast double play. Sargio to Tavares to Royce, covering first on the disputed play in the second inning. One out. Cubs with the bases loaded. Let's don't let this opportunity pass us by without scoring. One out in the inning. Pirates in field back for a double play, all except the third baseman, Gardner. Royce will take his wind up. Royce toes the pitching rubber, gets his sign from Zagia. Here's the first pitch to Young Blackwell. Pass ball low inside, ball one. Robinson shallow in center. Parker, normal position in right. Milner is deep in left. The pitch. High, ball two. Ball two and no strikes now to Blackwell. But don't help him out. He has just walked Johnson. On third, trio at second, Johnson at first. Royce is ready. Here's the ball, two no strike pitch. Half ball and a swing and a miss. Two and one to count. Truco to up next, but Hernandez continues to throw in the Cubs bullpen. Here's the two and one pitch. Blackwell checks his swing and the ball hits his bat. Goes back to the screen. A tough one for the Cubs because that ball was high and inside. So instead of three and one, the count is two and two. Pirates leading three to nothing, but the Cubs have the bases loaded. One out. Time is called by Kibler, and it's a balk. A balk is called by Kibler. So Bale will score. And Royce wants to know what he did. He hesitated as he was going to take his sign. So that's two moves, and you cannot make two moves in your windup. Kibler calls the block, which scores fail. It moves trio to third, and the tying run, Johnson to second, and Tanner is out talking to Kibler. So now the score is three to one, and the tying run is in scoring position. Tanner still having a chat with Kibler. Two and two the count on Blackwell, and it takes away the opportunity for a ground into double play by Blackwell. Kruko doing two up next. See how much that that balk has upset Royce. Tanner's taken 
a few parting shots at, at Kibler as he's walked into the dugout. Ball two, strike two, the count. Royce is ready. The pitch to Blackwell. Swing and a ground ball foul to third base, Flint Gardner. Gardner, if the ball was called fair by the umpire, he was ready to check the trio ahead and moved off third base. So the count remains two and two. Infield back, conceding the Cubs another run. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul into the Pirates' dugout. So the count remains two and two. Blackwell at the plate. Roy has his sign. Trio with a walking lead off third. Here's the pitch to Blackwell. Fastball, and he checks his swing. They'll ask for an appeal, I'm quite sure. They ask for the appeal? No. West votes in favor of the Cubs and gets a great hand from the crowd. A full count of three and two on Blackwell. Roy sets on the mound. Goes to the pitching rubber. Here's the windup and pitch. Fastball tap foul as Blackwell guarding that plate. He's not going to take anything close. The count remains three and two. Gardner deep at third. Severa deep at short. Senate deep at second. Gardner deep at first. So if Blackwell can hit this ball into the infield on the ground, Trio can score. Here's the pitch. Blackwell takes high, ball four. Bases are loaded. are loaded for two goals and time is called we're going to get a pinch hitter Trio is on first and Dean Klein is going to bat for two goals bases are loaded one out so the former Pirates will bat against Roy, Ryan's is hitting 268. No home runs, 13 RBI. One out for the Cubs, so Fernandez will be the new Cub pitcher. Time is called. Tanner. Walking out to the mound now, and he's going to make make a change. Royce is only gone. Whitson, a right-hander, coming in to relieve Royce, who has gone three and one third innings today, allowing the Cubs one run on five hits. He's walked two, did not strike out a hitter. And he's responsible for the men on third. So while Whitson takes his warm-up tosser, let's pause for this message. Ed Whitson, who has won three and lost four, he has an earned run average of 1.97. This is his 26th game. He's allowed 33 hits in 45 and two-thirds innings pitch. 13 runs. He has walked 23, but he has a great strikeout record of 39. He has three saves to his credit. He will not be facing Klein. Bittner will now pinch hit for Klein. And Bittner is batting 267, four home runs, 43 RBI. Cubs have the bases loaded, one run in, the Pirates lead three to one. So the Cubs trying to take advantage of this situation to get some runs in. Pirates will still play for a double play with the infield back. Robinson moves over into left center 
but very shallow. Now Bittner steps in the batter's box. Cubs to have trio at third. Davey Johnson at second with a tying run. Blackwell is on first with the lead run. Ed Whitson on the mound. Looks around to his infielders and outfielders. He was the Pirates' sixth selection in June of 74. Free draft. Here's a pitch. Fastball low. Free agent draft. Since close to 77 with Columbus. Ball one to Larry Bittner. Whitson will not take his windup. He's in the stretch. Here's the pitch. Curve ball tapped down to the first baseman, Sargio. A run will score. Sargio tags Bittner in front of the bag and is out. And Bittner thought that he beat the tag. But Cookie Rojas stops Bittner right now. As we mentioned before, if you've got a beat, Rojas will beat. If he doesn't, he will not. But a run scores on the tap to Sargio. So Bittner drives in his 44th RBI. And now it's a one-run game. Three to two in favor of the Pirates. And the Jesus will bat with runners on second and third. Two out. Johnson now on third. Blackwell at second. The first pitch to Ivan De Jesus. Curve ball outside, ball one. Whitson in relief of Roy. McGeehan gives out the sign. Here's the ball, one pitch. Fast, ball low, ball two, no strike. Scott, two up next. Three to two ball game. But they're still ducks on the pond. One duck being Johnson at third. The other, Blackwell at second. Ball two, no strike pitch. Low, ball three. Three and no to the Aces. He wants to go after this one. He checks down with El Malpitano. Gets his sign. Whitson on the mound. Here's the three and no pitch. Fast ball for a strike call. Three and one to count. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. It's three o'clock. Big pitch of the ball game right here. Three and one, two out. On its way. It's low. Ball four. The Jesus walk. To load them up for Rodney Scott. Three walks in the inning. Scott, single, pass Sargio in the first inning, wide out to Parker in the third. Now he's batting left-handed, of course. First pitch inside, ball one. Seguin calls time, wants to go out and try to settle his pitcher down with the bases loaded and two out. Robinson, once again, in left center for Scott. Stargell is far off of the right field foul line. Whitson into the windup in the pit. Pass ball for a strike over the outside corner. One and one to count on Scott. Scott levels that down over the plate. Here's the pitch. Pass ball low. Ball two, strike one. Whitson. 
pitch it normally with good control. He's only walked 23 men. Time is called now as the ball gets away from the Pirate bullpen where Jackson, the southpaw, is warming up. Ball two, strike one on Scott. Base is loaded, two out. Pirates lead by one run, three to two. Whitson has his sign. The pitch on its way, swinging a pop foul into the upper deck. The count is all evened up, two and two. On Scott. Johnson with his lead at third. Blackwell is off second. The Jesus off first with a tremendous lead. Now the pitch on its way. Scott takes inside and low ball three. So this becomes an important pitch in this ball game. As soon as Whitson releases the ball to the plate. The runners will start. Here's the stretch. Here's the three and two pitch. It's outside ball four. This game is all tied up. But better still, the bases are loaded for Buckner. Inning. The Cubs have chalked up five runs in one inning. 
It's five to three cups. Two out. 0 oh, and two on Bale. The 0 oh, and two pitch from Whitson. Curve ball and he swings and misses on a ball far above his head. He strikes out a little too anxious at the plate. But in the inning, five runs. Three hits. We were aided by four walks. Two men left on the base pass. At the end of four, come five, Pittsburgh three. Well, the cops walking into a big inning. Now, Willie Hernandez, the pitcher, has an opportunity to pick up a victory. He'll face Manny Sanji and Willie Stockel and Dave Parker, the two, three, and four men in the Pirates batting order. A week from today, Come on out to the ballpark. Not only to see a baseball game. Maybe we'll have some sunshine as we're getting right now. There'll also be a free gift. A week from today is Helmet Day. The first 15,000 kids, 13 and under, will get a blue souvenir cup style helmet free. Kids do need a fully paid ticket. Bleacher seats are not included. That's next Monday. The Cubs will be hosting the Atlanta Braves. Manny Sangian sacrificed in the third against Truco and grounded out to Trio against Mike in the first inning. Started the day hitting 291. Willie starts to wind up. Here's the pitch. Whoop. Fastball to sail very, very high. Ball one to Sangian. Hernandez appearing in his 35th ball game. Taking on a bride since his first year with the Cubs. Time here because Matty Trio is having a little equipment trouble. Well, he worked in the Saturday game against the Expos. Worked an inning. Didn't give up a hit or a run. That was his first outing in a week. But he got a victory out of San Francisco in relief. Now we're ready. Fastball by the southpaw. Misses too low. Ball two. Somewhere in between those two pitches is the strike zone. Then Gian feet close together. Back in the back. In the box. Swings to the next one and lifts a high fly ball. Manny Creel out of the outfield grass getting under it. And he grabs it two-handed. About 25 feet out of the grass behind second. A pop up by San Gian on the 2 0 delivery brings up Willie Stigel. Grounded out in the third inning and got a run batted in. His 51st of the year, he struck out in the first inning. Only action going on right now in the majors. Fernandez, first pitch to him. Breaks and caught the inside corner for a strike, just above the knees. Well, he's thrilling the bat as usual. Blackwell gives a sign. Here's the ball. It's a little bit low. Ball, one strike one. Five to three. Comes out in front at the end of four. Wind up the pitch. The fastball this time missed outside at the knees. Ball two, strike one. On the last side, the Cubs are six games behind Philadelphia with 53 defeats. The Phillies, 47 losses. They have 59 wins. The Cubs with 56. Chicago twirling the bat. Here's the windup. Fastball outside of the letters. Ball three, strike one in the left-hander. Another lefty, Dave Parker, do up next. So he's gotten behind on, on Stargill. Here's the windup in the 3-1 delivery. Breaking ball, low, ball four. That brings Parker to bat, and he represents the tying run. He has doubled and singled against Bruco. Last time, the Pirates saw Hernandez was over at Pittsburgh in June, and he came on and got Parker 
with the bases loaded and two out. That was in the 10th inning, and the Cubs went on to win it 6-4. to four. With Studer getting the win over Grant Jackson. That was Hernandez's first save of the year. Parker goes after the first one. He's out in front. Feels a little foul ball. Down to the end of the Pittsburgh dugout. Herman Franks ejected today. And the second call that went against the Cubs by first base umpire, the rookie, Joe West. Hernandez looks at the runner. Buckner not holding him on. There's a swing and a high chopper. Johnson Lee throws the trio. And they get the force play in a very, very fine play by Davey Johnson at third base. That ball bouncing high in the air, and he got a very quick release on his throw to Manny Trio to get the force out on Willie Stargell. There's two gone, and Big Dave Parker on with a fielder's choice. Excellent play. He jumped about three feet up in the air. No chance for a relay on it. A little pause here while... They clamp on the uh, protective equipment on Parker's helmet. Two iron bars on there, like a football mask. Bill Robinson stepping in. 0 for 2 against Kruko. Each team with a half dozen base hits. Long look at first. Step and a throw to first base. Parker... Though all his size can move. He has 12 stolen bases, been caught five times. Robinson, a right-hander, guards the plate very well. Here's the pitch to him. Breaking ball that's missed outside of the knees. Ball one. Runner out at first, two away. Here's the kick to pitch. Checks his swing, another breaking ball, and it's low away. Ball two. And the Cubs open the season at Pittsburgh. Hernandez worked in relief in a couple of ball games, but a total of three innings didn't give up any runs over there. Looks at first, steps and throws. And Parker back in the back, standing. Al Monchek coaching there. And Joel on that in the coach's box at third. The Cub outfield around to the left and deep for Robinson. Here's his kick in the pitch. Fastball swung out of it. And then a little extra on a good fastball in right at the belt. Ball two, strike one. Today they're wearing the short sleeve black shirts, trimmed in yellow. Bright uh, yellow numerals on the backs of the shirts. And then they white pants with a pinstripes on him. There's a swing and a high pop foul down the left field line to Jesus over. Ivan getting under it and he lost it at the last moment as he went up near the wall where the tarp just rolled up around that cylinder and he couldn't quite get to it. Drops just out of his range and Robinson and the Pirates are still alive. A count of ball two, strike two. No play on that one. And the cylinder not been right there. He could have been over and grabbed it. Robinson stands straight away. Runner on at first base. And a count of two and two with two away. Kingman very deep guarding the line. Scott deep in left center. Hernandez into the stretch. Willie's pitch. Swim out of it. Strikes out Robinson. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no walk. One man left on. Pirates have stranded five so far. And the Cubs come to bat in the bottom of the fifth inning at Ripley Field. Leading five to three. Look what I found in my change from A&P. S&H Green Stamps? That's right. A&P is giving you S&H Green Stamps with every purchase. And when you redeem your S&H A&P stores. Excuse me. If I can get rid of the frog, I'd like to remind you that now for one week only, you can find special values and the entire line of Panasonic home entertainers at Marshall Field and Company. Prices are reduced on televisions, including the best in black and white in color sets, Video recorders that record one show while you watch another. Even stereo systems, radios, and audio tape decks. The fans don't miss the special savings on Panasonic 
home entertainers. Now to August 12th at Marshall Field and Company, State Street, Water Tower Place, and Suburban Stores. Ed Woodson, a right-hander, had to come on a relief of Jerry Royce in the fourth inning, and he walked a couple of guys, gave up a hit, and two runs tallied against him. So the Pirate pitching has left something to be desired today. Mike Vail opened that fourth inning for the Cubs with a base hit, ended it by striking out Chase the Batman. Now Dave Kingman, who lined out in the fourth inning against Royce and popped up earlier against Jerry, faces the right-hander for the first time today. In that inning, the Cubs had three base hits and two of them off the gloves of infielders. But the Pirates pitching, very generous with bases on balls. Issued four of them. Whitson, first pitch. Kingman takes it to ball a little bit low. They do not have the shift off for Dave, but Stennett is only about 10 feet on the first base side of second, and Rennie is on the outfield grass. There's a swing and a deep, high drive. Center field, it could be. Way back is Robinson against the lines. He makes the catch. Almost straight away, center field, about 395 feet away. And a little bit of a breeze blowing in at about seven or eight miles an hour as that ball was high up in the air. It helped keep it where Robinson could make the catch on it. Had he been able to pull it at all, he would have had himself his 18th homer of the year. Manny Trio, two for two and a score to run today, steps in. Whitson winds, first pitch. Low ball one. In the Eastern Division race since the All-Star break, nobody has been able to take command. Phillies after their sweep yesterday. Here's a fastball swung on a foul into the seats over on the first base side. One one. The Phillies with their sweep are 12 and 13. And the Cubs after the split yesterday are 13 and 14. Pittsburgh has won 10 and lost 15 since the All Star break. Puts in fastball. Manny goes after it. Fouls it back this time up against the three. Oh, one strike two. Detroit Tigers played about the best in the major since the All-Star break. After sweeping the Sox four out of four, they've won 18 and lost only seven. Well, the Red Sox, 12 and 14, but Boston still carries a seven-game lead over Milwaukee, eight and a half over the Yankees, nine over Baltimore and Detroit. Tigers and the Orioles are now in a tie for fourth place in the American League Eastern Division race. Count of one and two on Manny Trio with one out, nobody on. Cubs batting in the fifth, here's the pitch. Fastball again, and he fouls this one. Way back into the grandstand section. On the line to the plate in third, it is still one and two. talking uh, one day last week while the Expos were in town about the mail that we get from uh, a lot of you folks who are farmers. You listen to the broadcast quite often on your transistor radios while you're working. And one gentleman, Brad Smith from New Haven, Indiana, if he heard it while he had his transistor in his pocket out on his tractor. Then he takes, and there's the ball. Baseball with a great appeal, not only to folks in the city, but certainly in the country. Puts and winds to two delivery. Then he takes, and he is called out on strikes on a pitch that caught the strike zone over the outside corner right at the knee. Strikeout number two for Ed Whitson. Bases are empty, and Davey Johnson stepping in 
has singled and walked in his first day in a Cub uniform. After drawing the walk in the fourth inning, came in when Rodney Scott threw a walk with the bases loaded. That tied the ball game at three. And Buckner's base hit, which Frankie DeBarris couldn't handle, drove in the go-ahead run. Right-hander takes in the first pitch of the ball. Whitson shakes off a sign. Right-hander now, ready, winds, delivers. Breaking ball, it's too high. Ball two. Davy, 35 years of age. Been in World Series competition, all-star competition. Play second, short, third. And can come off that bench cold and swing a hot bat. 2-0 delivery. Takes the fastball, strike at the knees. Ball two, strike one. Pirates will be here again tomorrow and Wednesday. There'll be no baseball for the Cubs on Thursday. But Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday will be broadcasting from Montreal. Two with the pitch, fastball for a strike right at the letters, two and two. Here's the windup to two delivery. That's too low. Ball three, strike two. Gary Royce walked two men while he was out there in three and a third innings. Whitson walked two and struck out two, giving up a hit. And Royce walked in one run. Start these wind up and give a little hesitation. Milner very deep and left. There's a swing and a ground ball. Garner was back at third. Has a long throw. Scooped up out of the dirt by Willie Stargell. Davey is retired for the first time today, and the Cubs in the fifth inning go down in order. So at the end of five at Wrigley Field, the Pirates come to bat against Willie Hernandez, with the Cubs still leading five to three. Willie Hernandez has had outstanding success against the Pirates, and I sure hope I don't put the whammy on him, but this bears mentioning right now. He has worked one inning here today, walked a man, given up no hits, and struck out one. Day. This is his 14th appearance in his career against Pittsburgh, and he has yet to give up an earned run. We're 22 in the third innings now. Has two wins, a loss, and two saves against the Pirates. First pitch from the left-hander, and he misses to Johnny Milner outside and high. Milner, a left-hander. Hit one uh, deep to Scott in center and popped up in shallow center to Scott. In the Pittsburgh Pirate bullpen now, Bruce Keeson doing a little warming up. Wind up in the 1-0 delivery. High and away, ball two, missed with a fastball. Will he a chance today to run his one and loss record to seven and two? Wines delivers. Miller's going to take, and it's in there. Ball two, strike one. Miller started today with a 300 batting average for the season. He's a little bit below that right now. Hernandez with a 2 1 delivery. Fastball swung on, ground ball. Buckner dies. It's off his glove, goes into shallow right field, and it's going to be a base hit as Buckner. Dove out of that infield dirt to his right side, and he's got a uniform that's pretty muddied up. A single by Milner to open up the sixth inning, and Rennie Stendhal will be the batter. Let's take a moment here for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Pirates now with seven hits for the day. And it has one of them, an infield single in the fourth inning. Got as far as third. He is one for two today. His stance is slightly closed. Right-handed batter. Hernandez delivers a swing and a foul back up onto the net behind the plate. A strike one count on Stennett. Still bothered by a knee injury of last year. Miller does not have... Anything better than average speed. But Buckner is holding him on at first. Cubs would like to get a double play ball. Fastball. He twisted it right out of the batter's box on a pitch in tight right at the belt. Ball one, strike one. 
Davy Johnson about five feet off the line at third. Back of the bag about three feet. Asus is actually shaded up the middle a little bit. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back into the backstop that time. Ball one, strike two. They've had uh, Vail shallow up a little bit in right field. And he is well off the line. Asus now with two strikes from the hitter. Takes a few more steps towards the bag at second. Ball one, strike two count. Kingman deep in left field. Here's a stretch, the kick, the pitch. Fastball, it goes after. Lines it foul out of play down the right field side. And is still ball one, strike two. Well, our producer, Jack Minovich, we're sorry to say, has been taken ill. Minovich had to uh, hit for home, and our producer now, John Madorno. One, two, pitch. Swung on, he hit him out of fifth with Evans. Trio, or DeHaster is charging in. Goes to Trio for a forced play at second and a nice play. Rennie Stennett hit on the bat handle with that good pitch by Hernandez. Bounce one slowly to the left side. And Jesus went for the only possible play he had as he came charging into the infield grass, put that throw across his body to Creo, forcing Johnny Milner. So Stennett reaches on a fielder's choice, and right-handed hitting Phil Garner steps in. He led off the third inning with a walk and eventually came in on Frankie Tavares' base hit into left field. Here's the first pitch. Fastball, but too high. Jerry Royce was trying to sacrifice with Connor out at first in that third inning. And Davy Johnson came in to field it, lost his footing in the grass. The ball wound up for an infield hit. Pass ball. And Woody gets the strike call right at the knees. Ball one, strike one. Two calls went against the Cubs at first base in this game by first base umpire Joe West. And on the second one, here's the pitch. Foul back out of play. Herman Franks was so irate on that one. That is protestation. Brought him an ejection. We are looking for a pinch hitter for the pitcher who's due up next. Duffy Dyer standing in the on-deck circle. Fastball. In too tight at the belt. Ball two, strike two, on Phil Garner. Pretty selective hitter. Flat out to center field in the fourth inning, so he's 0 for 1 officially today. But he has walked and scored. 2-2 two, two pitch to him. Very high. Will he release that one too soon? Ready, send it on at first base. And Buckner will be holding him on on a 3-2 pitch with one away. We'll keep an eye on him to see if he might be going. That's a pretty good lead. And then he's peering down to get his sign. Now looks over at first as he goes into the stretch. Got it goes. 3-2 pitch. Swung on. Foul back out of play. Garner going after one that time up around the shoulders. Bill has struck out at an average of about once every seven trips to the plate. Used to be with the Oakland A's. But then who didn't? One out, one on. Cubs with a 5-3 to three lead. Pirates batting in the sixth. Hernandez ready. Drives, sent it back to first base with a throw. And he tipped that one off. Right Anders. Keeson continuing to throw in their bullpen. He has started and he is relieved this year. Then it goes, 3-2 pitch. Swung on and again a foul ball. This time right back alongside the screen behind the plate. So Hernandez having difficulty disposing of Phil Garner. And Donnie Moore is now going to start throwing in the cup bullpen down the left field line. 
Garner has fouled off about three or four pitches here on a 3-2 delivery. So he's making Hernandez really work. Jesus skated just a little bit up the middle for this right-handed batter. Here's the delivery. Too high with a fastball, and he got the walk that he was looking for. Now they have put the tying runs on base with one away. Second walk issued by Willie, and Duffy Dyer, right-hander, is going to pinch hit. Dyer hitting only 233 with 31 hits, seven of them doubles, one triple. Doesn't have any homers. Driven in eight runs for the year. And he's fanned about once every six trips up. McKellar goes down to left field line to serve as a protector for bullpen catcher George Minowald with a right-hander in the batter's box. Runners at first and second. Sixth inning with only one away. Really normally excellent control. Now the stretch to pitch. Fastball. Strike called in the inside corner. Zach Davidson will give you just a little bit of a delayed call on strikes. Tim Blackwell doing the catching. Dyer, stockly built right-hander. Talks the bat high with the right shoulder. Here's the pitch. Swung on. And he got a piece of it. Fouled it back. Nothing in two on him. Some 40 innings now. Willie has walked 23 men, four of them intentional bases on balls. And two of them here today. One to Garner, who's now on first. Send it on at second. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Wasted a fastball, and he almost threw it away. Low and inside. Poor Steffi Dyer. Do a little rope skipping to get out of the way of that one. Ball one, strike two on him. Same two clubs get to the go after tomorrow. And on Wednesday to close out the homestand for the week. But we'll be back next Monday. One two delivery. Fastball swung on. Base hit. Three oh dough for the liner. Couldn't get to it and a run will score. Here goes Garner to third as Senate steps on the plate. It is now five to four. And that is the first earned run that the Pirates have tallied off Willie Hernandez. That's his 14th appearance against them. Solid lighter, Trio diving towards second base in a desperate attempt to keep that ball in the infield. So Duffy Dyer with a pinch hit single narrows the gap to a run. He's gone 22 and two thirds innings without giving up an earned run to this ball club. Mike Rourke, the Cubs pitching coach, coming out of the dugout. We have the top of the batting order up, Frankie Tavares. Senate able to score in Garner, going over to third. Cubs now leading five to four with one out. And Tavares, who singled and scored in the third, was thrown out on a fine play by the third baseman, Davey Johnson, in the fourth inning. Stepped in, he is one for three today. Right-handed batter. They get out him pretty good in Pittsburgh, the fans do. Willie Wheels takes the throw to third, throws one over to first base, but Dyer wasn't fooled at all. Pitcher does that, he'll step off the pitching rubber. Davey up almost to the edge of the grass where it's cut away at third. Buckner holding the runner on at first base. Here's the pitch. Goes after it. It's a high pop up back at second base. Manny Trio going out, getting under it. Runner right at third. Connor takes about two steps towards the plate. And everybody knew he wasn't going to try to score. As Trio raced out about 15 steps in the outfield grass to haul it in, and he was in good position to make the throw to the plate should Garner want to challenge him. But Manny has a good arm. So Tavares pops up, and now it'll take more than a good outfield fly to bring in a run. 
Danny Sanji in the hitter, popped up against Hernandez in the fifth inning, sacrificed in the third, grounded out in the first inning. So the veteran is 0 for 2 today. 5 to 4, Cubs. Hey, how about giving your employees a little boost in morale with a group outing out here at the ballpark? Enjoy the hot sandwiches, cold drinks, major league action. Don't worry about the details. Let Ernie Banks and his staff here at the ballpark handle that for you. Hernandez into the stretch. Then Gian swings and misses at a breaking ball. Boy, did he jump at that one. And I mean jump with both feet. Don't have to worry about details. Just call EB71919. The group sales staff will look after all the arrangements and charter bus. Speak to it. You all get to sit together in good box seats. Ask about the Ernie Banks special group package for groups of 20 or more. EB71919. Fernandez delivers. San Gian goes after a high one. Drills it to Scott deep in center field. Rodney is out there. Makes the shoulder high. Catch drifting out to center field to retire the side. Well hit by Manny. One run in the sixth inning for the Pirates on two base hits, one walk, and two men left on. The Cubs come to bat in the bottom of inning number six. Blackwell is to lead off against the new Pirate pitcher. With the score now, the Cubs five and Pittsburgh four. The last time. Bruce Keeson, their third pitcher of the day. Played their right-hander. He had a lot of problems with a booster, a finger of his pitching hand this year. And he eventually had to go on the disabled list and have surgery for it. He was a hero as a rookie with these Pirates a few years ago. They won the division championship and got into the World Series. Now a veteran that in 19 ball games, three as a starter. And Keeson's earned run average is a dandy, 2.79. He's won three and lost three this year. Tim Blackwell, that left-handed against him. Wendy's baseball team with Darrell Frazzle. Athletic Association Baseball and Basketball are going to present their 19th annual award night at St. Ignatius High School on West Roosevelt Road on Saturday night, August 19th. Seconds will be available at the door. You can purchase in advance or $2 at the door that night or $275. Saturday night, August 19th at St. Ignatius High School. West Roosevelt Road. First pitch of the ball to Blackwell, batting lefty. He walked in the fourth inning, but did not score. Wound up at third. Takes that one outside, ball two. They ruled that he was out on the back end of a double play in the second inning. Two-0 pitch, ball too high. Our television replay here, our monitor. Looked as though he was safe, that Royce took the throw. Royce was in the pitcher, and but did not have his foot in the bag. There's a strike call. Ball three, strike one. Really blew one on uh, Bill Buckner in the first inning at first base. He was safe, and that was a, a very obvious show on replay. 3-1 to pitch. And he takes it to strike. When it happened on that double play call in the second inning, Rookie Rojas, Herman Franks got into it pretty good with the umpires, particularly Joe West, who had made the call. There's a foul ball back out of play. And Herman got thrown out of the ball game. He had about enough. Full count now on Blackwell. Decent, tall, slender. It's right-handers. He can be awfully tough, especially when he sidearms them, and he doesn't mind brushing it back. 
Wind up, 3-2 pitch. Blackwell swings, bouncing ball. Shackles to his right, lets it go by. Stennis picks it up, throws to the pitcher covering. And Blackwell is out of there. Willie, who plays well off that line most of the time, went to his right for that ball. Stennis may have hollered to him. Let me take it. And Jason, quickly coming off the mound, to take the throw as he should do. San Gideon going out to talk to Jason now before Willie Hernandez bats against him. They say that Willie has not had a chance to bat officially yet this year, but he has scored a run. on a walk. Or maybe the stat is wrong, honey. But he has been about a time or two, huh? Tries to bunt the first pitch of fastball. Fouls it back out of play. Strike one count on him. Cincinnati Reds have dislodged the Giants, at least temporarily, from first place in the Western Division. By two percentage points. Giants held first place for a couple of months. There's a swing and a high pop-up behind the pitcher's mound. Who's going to get it? Bill Garner says, I'll handle it, and he does. Quickly puts it over to the shortstop. Two gone in the bottom of the sixth inning. Bases empty. And Yvonne DeJesus will bat against Keeson. Paid attendance today, pretty good house. 19,615 paid. 19,615 paid. A lot of free ones here today. Total in the house, 20,516. Jesus walked and scored in the fourth. He's 0 for 1 officially. Takes Keeson fastball high. Yvonne starting today, hitting 281. Hit safely in 14 out of his last 15 ball games. Keeson wide. Sidearm pitch, hit him right on the bat handle. Rolls it out to the second baseman. Stennis makes the pick up in the peg, and the side is retired in order. Good pitch by Keeson. At the end of six at Wrigley Field. He's got one of those nail biters. Pirates will have Stargell, Parker, and Robinson coming to bat. With the score, the Cubs five, the Pirates four. Sargell so far today has been on once with a walk. That was forced on Parker's ground ball. And he fanned, grounded out on the third. The ground out produced a run batted in his 51st of the year. Cubs now nursing a one-run lead after the Pirates had taken a three-to-nothing lead in the third. The Cubs with some help from the Pirates. Four walks in the inning, three singles, got five runs. The Pirates picking up a run against Hernandez in the sixth inning to narrow the gap to one run. But close ones between these two teams are routine this year. Stargell throwing the bat, waiting for Willie Hernandez to get set. Lefty looks down, gets his sign to wind up in the pitch. Swung out, bounces it foul. Just missed the on-deck fan, Dave Parker, with that one. Just skipped into the box seats over near where the Red Cloud group is sitting on the first base side. Strike one pitch will be on its way momentarily. Boy, the outfield is deep for this guy as well they should be. Oh, one delivery, sidearms him, and it sails too high. Ball one, strike one. Rick Reschel, the scheduled starter for the Cubs here tomorrow. Wind up in the 1-1 delivery. That's too high. Came over the top with that one. Ball two, strike one. And Willie having problems with his control here today. The big group from the city of Countryside. The recreation director, Larry Berta. 60 fanatical Cup fans. Rooting for a Cup win today. Aren't we all? 
Next it swung out and missed, and what a cut he took. But he made solid contact with that one. Mr. Starka would have planted it over the right field wall onto the street and perhaps into an apartment building. And their mayor, Carl Legant, with him. Now the count of ball two, strike two. Here's Hernandez in the windup in the pitch. Swung on and a high fly ball coming in for it as Mike Bale in right, shading his eyes with the glove. Had to make a backhand and catch at the last moment as he had nothing but trouble with that guy. Oh, that was close. But Mike stayed with it, had the glasses down. Last moment had to turn the glove, grab it backhanded. Fortunately, the ball wound up in the pocket. Mike Rourke is coming out to talk to Hernandez as Blackwell is out there talking with him. Dave Parker has a double, a single, and a force startled with his ground ball in the fifth inning. He says he wants very much to capture that batting championship this year. He starts getting 288, so he's now at about 290, maybe a little bit more. But leading the National League today in hitting, Jeff Burrows of the Braves. They'll be in here next Monday. Burrows hitting 318, and a lot on his heels, Pete Rose hitting 317. And Buckner of the Cubs, 316. Harry Whitfield of the Giants, 311. Davy Concepcion, Bill Matlock, 307. Mary Boa, 304. First pitch. Sidearm fastball, the big left-hander takes it tight. Greg Luzinski of the Phillies leads in homers with 26, one more than George Foster. Jim Rice with 25, facing the American League, along with Larry Heisel, better not overlook Milwaukee Brewer. He has 25. And Jason, uh, or Gorman Thomas of Milwaukee. Two of the Brewers with 25 home runs sharing the American League leadership in homers with Jim Rice. And there's a the ball. Ball two. Facing the majors in runs batted in, having a great year. Rusty Staub of the Tigers with 89. 2-0 pitch. Takes a fastball. Strike called in the outside corner. Ball two, strike one on Parker. Buckner on the outfield grass for him at first base and about seven or eight feet off the line. In the outfield deep, wind up by Hernandez, the pitch, swung on, bouncing ball back up the middle. Base hit for Parker, his third hit of the day. And the big guy makes the turn, decides he better get back to first base. He represents the tying run of the ball game. And again, they give him that special batting helmet with the face guard on it. Cheekbone uh, broken this year in a collision. And narrowly it averted uh, critical eye damage. Bill Robinson stepping in. That's their third hit off Fernandes. Donnie Moore again up and throwing in the cup bowl fan. Fernandes checks the runner at first. Here's a kick to pitch, and Robinson takes a fastball, missing inside of the belt, ball one. Rod Carew leading the American League in hitting, 329 for the veteran. Al Oliver used to be with these Pirates, now with the Texas Rangers. Six points behind Carew in the American League batting derby. Oliver batting 323. Phoenix Lowry running the ball club now with Herman Franks thrown out of the game. Facing up and down in front of the dugout. Now Mike Rourke coming out again, and Hernandez flips the rosin bag up in the air as he sees Mike come out of that dugout. I think his arm is bothered. Yeah, well, he hasn't been sharp today. He has his back turned to Rourke with his arms folded at three. Venus Lowry running the ball club now with Herman Franks thrown out of the game. Facing up and down in front of the dugout. Now Mike Rourke coming out again. And Hernandez flips the rosin bag up in the air as he sees Mike come out of that dugout. I think his arm is bothered. Yeah, well, he hasn't been sharp today. He has his back turned to Rourke with his arms folded across his chest. Looking down the right field area. 
And here comes Donnie Moore in. He will be the third cup pitcher of the ball game. Keaton working for them as their third earlier. So while Donnie comes in to face Bill Robinson, we have a delay. Let's take time off for this victory. Now True Value Hardware scores. Donnie, a right-hander, has been in more games than any other cup pitcher this year. This is his 53rd appearance. That's four saves, five wins, four losses. Carries an earned on average, 3.89. Guy who's been in the most games for the Pirates, the Blade, Kent Jacoby. He has already been in 61 ball games in relief. Go to first. Old Parker back. Robinson, right hander. Four again wheels. Tosses one over to Buckner, and again Parker back safely. Sitter sitting down at the end of the bullpen bench down the left field line. Another throw to first to keep Parker on. Robinson being very patient. Now he's back in there. And four into the stretch. Donnie's delivery. Just missed at the knees to this right-hander. That makes it 2-0. and He inherited a 1-0 count. Johnny appeared in the first game against Montreal yesterday. Right-hander, 2-0 pitch, swung on, and a high fly ball. Mike Vail coming in a few steps. Now retreats, makes the catch over his left shoulder this time. Wind, but coming in a little bit from right center field, started to carry it away from him. There's two gone. Johnny Milner will be the batter before he steps in. Let's take a moment for station identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Mike has had a little problem out there with the sound of the wind so far and the bleacher fans out in right uh, field behind him. Having a little fun with him. Milner, a left-hander. Swings and a high fly ball. Dave Kingman moving to his right. Should be under it. Has time. He is there. The fight is retired. Donnie Milner with a high fly ball inside the left field line. No runs. One in. One man left on. Time for the seventh inning stretch at Wrigley Field. For the Cubs, Rodney Scott, Bill Buckner, and Mike Bale will be the first three hitters. What's the score still? The Cubs five, Pittsburgh four. The nice, lacy, wide brim straw. With a colorful purple sash and ribbon around it. All kinds of pennants and banners being held up here by these enthusiastic fans, a paid crowd of more than 19,000 here today and a total in the house of more than 20,500. While the Cubs figure to draw somewhere around a million five hundred to a million six hundred thousand, the Pirates are not enjoying a good season in paid attendance at home. They estimate that they will probably draw somewhere around 900,000 to their ballpark. In this day and age, will not pay all the bills. Rodney Scott, first pitch to him a ball, leading off the seventh inning, batting left-handed against Keeson. Here's the pitch, fastball inside, above the knees, 2-0 and on Rodney. Tander, he's batting 305 for the year. Takes that fastball, a strike at the letters. Ball two, strike one. He singled in the first inning. Walked with the bases loaded in the fourth. Takes a cut at that one, gets under it, fouls it out of play. Third base side. Ball two, strike two. Starting his second inning of relief. All slender veteran delivers. Scott jumps at it, fouls it back. Neither Mike Crucco nor Jerry Royce on the scene. 
Haven't been for quite a while. And neither is Herman Frank. He got thrown out. Cubs uh, go into this game today about 61,000 ahead of last year's attendance. This is the Cubs' 50th date at Wrigley Field this year, the 50th date. There's a swing and a drive to left field. Milner over. Playing him almost perfectly, grabbed it about 10 feet inside the foul line. Right out near the cup bullpen drill. And that brings up Bill Buckner. His sharp single that Tavares could not handle at shortstop in the fourth inning, drove in a pair of runs and made it 5-3. to three. It is now 5-4, to four, Cubs. He was called out on the ground ball to the shortstop in the first inning by umpire Joe West. And our television monitor in our booth here indicated that he was safe by about a foot or so. We don't use television replays for official judgment. And that's a good thing we don't. They don't always give you the right perspective. First pitch of the strike. He goes after a fastball. Buck fouls it out of play. Don Robinson, a rookie, is scheduled to pitch for the Pirates here tomorrow against Rick Russell. And then a battle of left-handers slated for Wednesday. Jim Rooker against Dave Roberts. 0-2 pitch. Buck swings. Bounces it foul. That's going to go into the Pirate dugout. Whalen, longtime uh, friend, going back to World War II of uh, the Cubs skipper Herman Franks. Again, out behind home plate, watching the action. Alongside of him, batting coach Luke Fonseca. 0-2 pitch, swung on at a high pop-up. Tavares, the shortstop, out in the outfield grass. Should have no trouble. He grabs it easily. That brings up Mike Vail, who singled and scored in the fourth inning. And he also struck out in the fourth inning when the Cubs sent ten men to the plate and scored all five of their runs. Three singles, four walks in the inning. Mike is one for three today. The Milwaukee Brewers are idle today. And so are the Boston Red Sox, who lead Milwaukee by seven in the Eastern Division. The New York Yankees are off. The White Sox will be down at Kansas City tonight. Bale tries to butt, fouls it back out of play for a strike. Kansas City leading the California Angels by two games. Oakland by four. The Texas Rangers, despite Brad Corbett's layout of so many bucks, are eight and a half games off the pace in the Western Division. Strike one pitch will be on its way here from Keeson. Here it is. And Bale swings. And he went right on through it. Nothing in two. The blade against the Colby now gets up in their bullpen. Already been in 61 ball games. 0-2 pitch. Fastball. Little high. Ball one, strike two. San Guillen was ready going to the dugout. Hoping to get the strike call. Frankie Barrios got to go for the White Sox tonight against Dennis Leonard as the Sox try to snap their losing streak. Baltimore will be at Toronto. California at Oakland. Sidearm fastball outside. Two and two. Rather light schedule in the National League tonight. Three games. Two two pitch. Bale goes after it. Hits a high fly ball. Long run by Milner and Tavares. Who's going to get it? Tavares is out there and he grabbed it just inside the foul line out near the Bullpen pitcher's mound down the left field line. Long run by Frankie. And Bale is retired. So are the Cubs in the seventh inning. They go down one, two, three. Keith in his face, six men in two innings. Johnny Moore will be facing Rennie Stennis, Bill Goddard, and then we'll be looking for a pinch hitter as the Pirates come to bat in the eighth with the Cubs leading five to four. The Cubs and the Cubs. We make our minds a 
first strikeout by Donnie Moore. He has faced four Pirates and retired four. Now Ed Ott, early catcher, will pinch it. He's hitting 238. He's done in 73 ball games this year. Has six homers and 22 runs batted in. And he's got the power to hit one out of here. So Keeson is out of the action. Jacoby apparently is going to be their next pitcher. He continues to throw in the bullpen. We're in the eighth with the bases empty. 5-4 Cubs. Moore is first pitch. Left hander swings. Ground ball. Trio to his left. Ball hugs the ground. He picks it up. Throws. Out is out of there to retire the side. End of seven and a half. Here at Wrigley Field. It is still the Chicago Cubs five and the Pittsburgh Pirates four. Well, so many of us could have the problem as Jacoby does, Lou, huh? Does that work and work and work and try to get the plate out? Nothing happens. It's the same with me. Or is it off? <laughs> if he eats everything that's supposed to be fattening, makes all kinds of helping uh, vitamins. Still got a waistline. About as big around as your forearm. I thought you were going to say Wally's yeah. head. Well, yeah. that's, that's pretty close, too. Yeah. Tell them I said, I think I had a bigger waistline when I was born than you've got now. <laughs> well, he's in the best 61 games. He's, I don't know. He said, I don't feel tired. They say he weighs 167. He says, forget it. 6'4 become an excellent relief pitcher. Sidearm delivery to Dave Kingman popped up behind the plate. Manny Sengian coming over into the shadows. It was a look out! Ryder came up and they wound up on that emblem, the cup emblem where the on deck fan is. And Manny went sliding down. They just missed a collision and the bat boy was also there. Hope nobody got hurt. He made the catch on it. He started to make that catch only about 15 feet away from the plate. The wind has picked up since the game started, blowing in towards third base. Trainer Tony Botterome out in a hurry to check to see if nobody got hurt on it. He's gone sliding right into the brick wall. Almost right into the lap of Mr. and Mrs. Bill Hagenau, who's sitting in the uh, box seat right there. Mr. Hagenau, president of the Cubs. His daughter just had a uh, birthday, I think it was last week. South Berto did here. In fact, I think Mrs. Hagenau pushed again, but not enough. enough. <laughs> you have to have a long arm. <laughs> well, thank heaven nobody was hurt. is out Manny Trio who looked at strike three in the fifth inning stepped in Kelby's first six to him a sidearm fastball for a strike called right at the letter and Manny steps out of there looks got a sack save as it asked him about that one he has two singles and he has scored a run today so he's two for three Kelby always wears the dark glasses sidearm pitch and that time it is outside of the knees. Ball one, strike one. He's going to be setting a record for relief appearances by a Pirate. 61 already. There is an excellent earned run average. 2.16. One five and lost six. Trio checks his swing and that's a strike call. One and two on him. That was away from him. The Dolby was 18 saves. Far, far out in front of anybody else in the ball club. Wind up in the one-two delivery. Swung out of miss. That was a breaking ball. But Manny Creo becomes the second out in the bottom of the eighth. And Davey Johnson stepping in. Made his debut with the Cubs today. 
getting a single up the middle. And his first trip to the plate, that was back in the second inning, and then he walked and scored in that five-run fourth inning. Officially, he's one for two, bounced out to retire the side in the fifth. Veteran right-handed hitter. Straightaway stance, the Cubbies delivery. He was facing these Pirates, of course, over the weekend at Pittsburgh when he was a member of the Phillies. Looks at that first pitch and strike. Pirates, the only team in the league that uh, wear the centennial type, uh, type of cap that came out a couple of years ago. Throws a sidearm curveball that misses inside above the knees. A slow curve. Ball one, strike one. Chicago with the long golden colored sweater under that uh, short sleeve. Delivers and there's a strike. Ball one, strike two. Up dressing with a comfortable one run lead. Bottom of the eighth, five to four. They have nine hits. The Cubs with six. Covey winds, and Davey Johnson takes that one is outside. Two two. Real beanpole, this guy, but he's got a good arm. And he said last year he didn't get enough work because they had four turn and gossage in their bullpen. Two two delivery. Sidearm pitch swung on, base hit. Davey pulls one in the hole. Between Dyer and Cabarrus, his second hit of the day for the Cubs. Tim Blackwell will bat left-handed. Gary White will go in now to run for Davies. He's made a very fine debut for the Cubs today. play the outfield, and Rodney Scott will come in to play third, and we'll go to the ninth inning. On this homestand, we've seen two sparkling catches by Cup center fielders, Greg Gross yesterday, and Gary White against the Cardinals when they were here. Both excellent catches. White's more spectacular. Grosses yesterday was a real dandy. Throw to first, and Gary back in time. That's a pretty good lead against Jacoby. Let's see if he won't be going. Here's a stretch, and Jacoby throws again to Stockwell at first base, puts the tag on the runner who went back in standing. Pittsburgh here tomorrow and Wednesday to close out this portion of the homestand. We'll be at Montreal for the weekend and then back home Monday, Helmet Day, with the Atlanta Braves coming to town. I've got a couple of young kids in that ball club that are excellent. Here's the delivery. Outside. Ball one. Mr. Horner that they drafted, their number one draft choice, a great star at Arizona State University, a third baseman. Mr. Murphy has been with him since the outset of the season. Big catcher, first baseman. 1 0 pitch. Instead, he throws it to first. It gets away from Chicago, and White will wind up at second base. Chicago retrieves the ball from near their dugout, and Jacoby is going to be charged with a throwing error on an attempted pickoff of White at first. That's the Pirates' second error of the day, and they're 104th this year, and that's one of the reasons. They're no closer to the Phillies than they are. 104 ever. Up with 93. And they pulled off a double play today. The radio, Chuck Tanner, their manager, coming out. The Cubs have 98 double plays. Tanner's old boss man, Johnny Allen, here today. Tanner was managing the White Sox, and John Allen was president and owner of the ball club. Became close friends. Tanner went out to the Oakland A's, charged with Charlie Finley. Pirates wanted him so badly. They sent Manny Sanguian and hundred thousand dollars to Charlie Finley to acquire the services of Tanner as a manager. Now they've got Sanguian back. Charlie has Jack McGeehan back as his manager. And they're doing very, very well. to go. The 
shall be stretched. Blackwell swings the liner into left field. Caught. Johnny Miller's had a good jump on the ball. Came in and grabbed it. Letter high. An opposite field line drive. In the eighth inning for the Cubs. No runs. They hit one pirate air. One man left on. Well, we go into the ninth inning. With the Cubs still leading five to four. Dog area offices. To borrow up to ten thousand dollars, call and over three two zero two zero. Also an office in Kankakee. Nice cushion. One run. Be careful. Johnny Moore will face Frankie Tavares, the Pirates' leadoff man. As we go into the ninth inning. Rodney Scott has moved over to third base, and Jerry White, who came in to run for Davey Johnson, is in center field. With Greg Gross in right, Dave Kingman in left. In the infield, the Cubs with Bill Buckner at first base, Manny Trio at second, Mick Gallagher at shortstop, and Rodney Scott at third. With Tim Blackwell doing the catching, the Cubs can hold on here. The victory would go to Willie Hernandez, and Ed Whitson would be charged with the loss. Vince Lloyd and Lou Boudreaux here with you at Wrigley Field. Hold on. The bear is stepping in. That's one hit today. Right-hander takes and Moore is five with a fastball. Ball one. Four winds. Tavares is going to take, and there is a strike on a fastball below the belt. We have to do this about the seventh inning. I'm sorry we didn't get to it. We want to welcome the group from the Trinity Lutheran Church and School at Fur Ridge, Illinois. You're pulling for a cup victory today. Group of 20, the patrols and maintenance department. Tavares pushes the butt of the first base side. It's going to be a tough play. Trio in. Very in pickup. Puts the through to Buckner. Underhand pass and a beautiful play. Tavares has been robbed. By Manny Trio. He came charging in as the right handed batter pushed that butt past the pitcher. And Trio broke in quickly, got the ball some three or four feet in on the grass, and made a little sidearm toss to Buckner, who gloved it just before Tavares' foot came down on the bag. Beautiful play. One out. Manny Sanguillon stepping in. Wind up the pitch. Right-hander takes, and there's a ball outside off his glove. A group from the Trinity Lutheran Church. They have the principal, Dean uh, Rawl, and the pastor, Reverend Olmstead. Wind up in the pitch. And he a big swing, and Van Gillen fouls that one off the right hand to plate umpire Sax Davidson. It's a life. Ball one, strike one. The offseason, Sax, who lives in the Ohio uh, area, not too far from uh, Cincinnati, the deputy sheriff. And he polices the ball game very well, too. Thank you. One one delivery to San Gillen. Takes the ball inside at the knees. Ball two, strike one. Pirates about hit the Cubs, nine to seven. But they were generous with some bases on balls, and the Cubs got five runs in the fourth inning. Four walks, three singles. There's a swing and a drive in the right center field. That could be trouble. White on the run. Dive. Hold on, catch. Holy mackerel. Oh, I don't believe it. And Manny said he is standing about 15 away from second with his hands on his hips glaring out there. He has been robbed of extra bases on an absolutely super, super catch by Jerry White, who's getting a standing ovation. Race hard in the right center field at the last moment. He dove out, got the glove out, right on the grass, and the ball into it. An absolutely clean and superb catch. And that is the second time in a week that he has robbed the opposition in the ninth inning of extra bases. Man, does that move look good now, huh, Lou? Oh, oh. great. 
That's a spectacular play and one coming in a nice city. But he didn't hesitate on that ball at all. He was going to gamble and his gamble won. A sensational play by the outfielder. And this again is execution when you need it because that would have been a triple. And it might have oh, yeah. been inside the park home run. No, the way no. Sagan was standing only eight feet from yeah. second base. Now with two out. And Sargo due to bat. Bruce Suter is going to be brought in. Take a moment here while he warms up for this message. We'll be right back. Can I help you? Don't pressure us. Irma, he hasn't done anything. Oh, he will. <laughs> identification. This is the WGN Chicago Cubs Baseball Network. This is WGN Radio Chicago. Wind up at the first base. Sargo takes it to strike. Gallagher behind second base. The only man on the left side of the infield is Rodney Scott. Rio at the edge of the outfield grass. Buckner at the grass on the right side. There's a pitch swung on and they face it anyway. Throws it between Creo and Kelleher. White quickly gets it in and starts with his arm representing the tying run in the ballgame. Well, as we were talking earlier, these two ball clubs in their first nine games this year had five of them decided by one run. And two went into overtime for extra innings. It is five to four here, and Stargo, who keeps it alive for the Pirates with a single off of Suter, is going to be lifted for a pinch runner. And Omar Marino, extremely fast, their leading base dealer, is going to run for it. He hit a liner between Trio and Gallagher on the right side of the infield. The first hit of the day. Now Dave Parker will be the batter. I say he's their leading base hitter. Point out he has 45 stolen bases this year. Been caught 14 times. 45. He's the tying run. And Parker at the plate. Swings viciously. Taps a foul ball off his foot. He'll limp around a little bit. Matchup uh, tomorrow between Rick Russell and Don Robinson will be the second for them this year. Robinson suffered his first loss of the year. Russell and the Cubs beat the Pirates here at Wrigley Field, 5-1. to one. Here's the pitch. Takes that suitor special low. Ball one, strike one. Suter has a win and a loss against Pittsburgh this year. 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung out in it. Whoa, man, what a cut. 230 pounds. Put every ounce of bone and muscle in his body into that swing. Now, Kevin, he missed. With two out in the ninth inning, run around at first base, cuts leading five to four. Suter has a count of one and two on Parker. Here's the pitch. The runner knows a swing and a answer. Right now, 